What is going on guys? And in game 1, the Lakers crushed the Heat, and the big reason was because of the Lakers defense. In game 1, the Heat had a 103 offensive rating, which was their lowest of the playoffs for a single game. While in rounds 1 through 3, they had a 114 offensive rating, which was third best in the playoffs. So, let's take a look at how the Lakers slowed down the Heat's offense. But first, I want to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring another video. When I'm bored, there's a lot of things I like to do. Play basketball, watch basketball, listen to podcasts about basketball. But when my mind isn't on the Drogic Bam pick and roll, I often like to watch Netflix, an experience that is greatly improved with Surfshark VPN. Surfshark allows me to access block content on places like Netflix and YouTube that isn't available in my area. And it's great because it keeps my information private and secure from hackers. They can't touch me, just like defenders can't touch jump shooters. So a few years ago, I was in Japan and I couldn't watch The Office on Netflix. But if I had Surfshark, I could have accessed the show just like if I was still in the US. And the best part about Surfshark is, if you use my code COACHDANIEL, you get a crazy 83% discount plus 3 extra months free. And with Surfshark's 30 day money back guarantee policy, there's no risk at all. A major bright spot for the Lakers defense was their ball screen defense, and here we see what they're trying to do. As Hero comes and gets the handoff, Davis will be up at first to discourage the jumper, but then he'll quickly retreat towards the basket. And what they were really good at in this game was pursuing the ball. So watch as Caruso chases Hero and affects the shot. The Lakers are long, and this is a picture-perfect rear-view contest by Danny Green as he fights over the screen and blocks Strogic. In particular, the length seemed to really affect Tyler Hero. Here, he nicely rejects the screen, but with two defenders waiting for him at the basket and Dwight Howard coming from behind, he stops short and takes a contested jumper. It was also clear one of their big points of emphasis was to not let Bam get lobs in the pick and roll, and they were successful. Notice here how Davis drops deep into the paint, not allowing Bam to get behind him, and then he still has the length to block the shot. And what made this play possible was Green pursuing. With Davis dropped so deep, that may allow Drogic to get off a 12-footer, but with Green right there, he doesn't have room. This is one of Miami's favorite plays. They'll get it to Bam, and then they'll set a pin down here for Butler to come get the handoff. And the goal here is to get Butler an advantage so Bam can dive right to the hoop without setting a screen. But notice how Morris does a good job of not letting Bam get behind him. Kuzma pursues Butler, and then Green helps off of a mediocre shooter in Solomon Hill, and they get the steal. Compare that to this play against the Bucks, who were clearly not as prepared or disciplined to defend the play. Hero gets the pin down, and then Giannis lets Bam get behind him for the alley-oop. What the Lakers will live with is Bam catching it on the short roll and taking a short jumper or a floater, and he missed these shots in Game 1. Another thing the Lakers are good at is correctly knowing when to switch. So here for instance, KCP does get screened a bit and falls behind, and the Lakers are really good at this late switch, where Howard calls it out and he'll take the ball and KCP will veer onto Bam, and this is another way to take away the roll. Also, in Game 2, the Heat's guards need to be more patient against the late switch. Here, Hero simply forced up a shot when he got the switch, instead of trying to dribble it back out and exploit the mismatch. And also, what makes this late switch valuable, especially for the Lakers, is because of their collective size. That's KCP switching onto Bam, not some diminutive point guard. Here's another play where I thought the Heat could have been more patient. Drogic gets the pitch, and Crusoe falls over, and so now Davis switches on to Drogic, but instead of trying to get it to Bam, or maybe drive along the baseline, he tries to shoot over AD, and AD's length overwhelms him. But this is what makes the Lakers so tough to play against. Here we have a late switch, and Drogic does do a better job of holding off on the first shot, but with AD switched on to him, that's not a mismatch, and Davis was awesome defensively. They can late switch, but also, they did a good job of sometimes just switching right away. Here, Iguodala is in at center, but instead of playing traditional pick and roll defense with Davis, they can just switch that right away since Iguodala really isn't a big. Green is fine switching on to Iguodala, and they can stay out of pick and roll defense. 
Great job not fouling. And in general, the Heat just played a series where they could pick on Kemba Walker anytime they wanted to because of his small size, but the Lakers don't really have anyone like that. They have a lot of big role player wings such as Green, KCP, Kuzma, and the lack of weak links really takes this defense to another level. And here's a possession where the Heat tried to avoid Davis and hunt the best perimeter matchup, but the Lakers don't have anyone really to target. There's AD's length again. So their ball screen and handoff defense was good, and also their defense was excellent on Duncan Robinson, and they did a great job of aggressively pursuing him. So here he wants to get this handoff towards the middle, but KCP is right on top of him and forces him to back cut beneath the three point line. Here Robinson does get the handoff, but KCP is able to stay tight and no advantage is gained. Robinson had 0 points on 0 for 3 shooting in 27 minutes and here's another great play where the Heat look to set a pin down for him in semi transition but KCP jumps in front of that screen almost like top lock forcing Robinson to back cut, Rondo calls out an alert switch and they contain the play. And the scary part for Heat fans is the Lakers defense on Robinson got better as the game went on. So in the first half, this happened a couple times, where here Robinson comes off a screen into a handoff, and the Lakers, with Rondo and Green being involved here, should probably switch it, but they end up trapping it, allowing Iguodala to roll free, and the Lakers are lucky the Heat don't score. Now in the second half, the Heat run pretty much the same play, but as Robinson gets the handoff here, instead of trapping it with Green and Kuzma, Green will peel off and switch on to Iguodala, so now Robinson doesn't have a pass, Kuzma swarms him on the switch, and they contain the play. And in the second half, they just stayed really tight to Robinson, and we can see their strategy. On the drive, Rondo is not looking to help off of Robinson, and then as Iguodala drives, Robinson looks to relocate, but Rondo turns his back to the ball and doesn't let Robinson get a look. Now if you're the Heat, one area of the Lakers game plan you can certainly look to exploit more in Game 2 is when Howard would look to trap Robinson off of a handoff. The Lakers aren't going to switch this with a true center, and so this allows Robinson to hit out of bio on the short roll, and the Heat have an advantage. There's a 2 on 1 on the weak side, but they have to do better at executing. Here, there's no cut, and I thought Adebayo got selfish here, settling for the fadeaway. Lastly, I want to talk about how the Lakers did a great job of defending without fouling, and this is what made their defense on Robinson so good. Robinson did get three open looks from three, but the Lakers did a nice job of contesting the best they could without fouling, and they didn't foul a jump shooter all night. According to CleaningTheGlass.com, Miami had a free throw rate that would have been in the 11th percentile for a single game, and here, Green does a nice job of not falling for the pump fake, instead, he's the second jumper as he contests after Butler leaves his feet. And not fouling jump shooters is a big deal. These may be the worst fouls you can commit, and the Lakers avoided these fouls in Game 1. But for the Heat, twice they foul jump shooters, and here Robinson leaves his feet and fouls KCP, and this time Iguodala is a bit too aggressive contesting and fouls KCP. And the Lakers just played a really disciplined game. And here, when Butler, who draws a ton of fouls, goes right at Kuzma, Kuzma stays disciplined, puts his arms straight up, and doesn't foul. And here, Jones makes a good cut to the basket, and this looks like a spot where the Lakers could foul, but LeBron and AD surround Jones, and it's Davis here who gets his hand on the ball. Well, there you have it guys. The Lakers are clearly the more talented team, and in Game 1, they were also the more disciplined team. Let's see if the Heat can get their act together in Game 2. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.